Hello from the University of Sunderland. My name is Dr. Derek Watson and I'm here today to talk to you about the evolution of the Enlightened model with regards to food safety culture. First question, would you eat this lemon? Well, hopefully not because you can see it's way past its sell-by date and to do so may in fact give you food poisoning. However, would you eat once cooked one of these meat or poultry dishes? And why not? Because it looks okay. And this is one of the challenges that we face against foodborne contamination. Quite often, it's invisible to our human senses. And this can have dire consequences to the consumer, to the organization, and to employees. So here's some startling facts. There are 75 billion people who walk planet Earth today. 600 million people suffer food poisoning each year, resulting in 240,000 deaths a year. Now this problem isn't confined to third world countries. If you take the European area, there are 23 million cases of food poisoning each year, and that results in 5,000 deaths a year. In the UK, it's about a million people suffer food poisoning each year, and that costs the UK economy over a billion pounds. So let's agree today that food contamination is a serious business and one which needs to be eliminated. So how did the Enlightened model evolve? Well, I was approached by the To Train organization. They are global experts in consultancy and training with specific reference to food safety culture. And they asked me as an academic, could I develop a model that could measure food safety cultural compliance? because we both agreed that the real needle thread in the fight against foodborne contamination is through employees' professional and proactive compliance to food safety management systems. So this begs the question, why do people take risks at work? Why do people deviate from procedures that can compromise food safety? Prior to the research, I applied for ethics approval and was granted it from our university's ethics committee. And the research approach took four key steps. The first step, I worked very closely with the Tatrain organization who, who have 90 years of experience. And my association with Tatrain has been invaluable. Secondly, we conducted observational site visits with various food manufacturers, both high risk and low risk within the UK. I also conducted extensive reading of academic journals focusing, focusing on food safety and food safety culture. I also walked through various quality procedures to identify the strengths and the weaknesses. And from those four processes, various themes bubbled to the surface. But with thematic analysis, I was able to boil down and condense them or compartmentalize them into four key areas, which I called the four C's. First C, control. We looked at the strategy, the utility of the strategy. Did it motivate the workforce? We looked at leadership styles. How effective was the leadership embedded in the organization? We looked at processes. We looked at quality assurance. Were they fit for purpose? And also, we looked at how the organization adapted to change. Second C, cooperation. And with cooperation, we looked at responsibility. How was responsibility embedded into the organization? We also looked at empowerment. How did the organization implement empowerment procedures? And did it work? We looked at teams, asked the big question, did the organization have a team culture? or a group culture. And what I mean by a group culture is, there is a clear hierarchy, strongest at the top, weakest at the bottom. And we also looked at recognition. Did the employees feel recognized for good behavior, compliance to procedures, and was that appreciated throughout the organization? Third C, communication. We looked at the company's vision. How real was that vision? And did the workforce buy into that too? We looked at the normative behavior with management and employees. We looked at the accuracy of communication and we also looked at the quality of feedback. The last C, competence. And with competence, 
we take a root and branch review of an organization's training regime. We also look at their appraisal systems and ask the questions, do they work? We also look at the development of the tangible examples of employees being promoted from within up the organization rather than being recruited from outside. And lastly, was there a feeling of self-belief in the organization? And there you have it, the template. I've talked to you about the four C's. I've talked to you about the four subsections. So it really drills deep into an organizational culture. And we called it the enlightened model. And it follows three key steps. Step one, interviews. All employees are issued with a questionnaire comprising of 48 questions. Once we've collated the responses back via tablet or paper-based systems, we analyze them both quantitatively and qualitatively. The organization then receives an interim report highlighting the data responses, the analysis, the findings, which identify best practice, but also areas of concern. Those areas of concern feed into the second stage, the one-to-one -one interviews, in which a representative sample is taken from the organization, from management to employees, addressing those former challenges that were identified in the questionnaire. The organization then receives a second inter interim report of that analysis, and those concerns identified through the one-to-one -one interviews then formulate the focus group interviews. On completion of that process, the organization receives a comprehensive report and the data has been validated because it's been triangulated from the questionnaire to the one-to-one -one interviews to the focus groups. And what we do do, we identify the problems in the organization or the areas of concern, but we also provide them with a route map of solutions. Coincidentally, at the same time, British Retail Consortium Global Food Standards also were aware of the challenges organisations face with regards to foodborne contamination. So much so that they have revised their standards. So now it is a key requirement for organisations to develop a food safety culture plan to identify how they are improving and addressing challenges in the organization with regards to food safety compliance. So what was the feedback? Well, the model was tested within the UK with both high risk and low risk food manufacturers. Organizations who had robust systems and fairly loose systems. And the overwhelming feedback from organizational management was that they were very pleased with the results because it addressed the elephants in the room. It identified core problems that were fermenting in the organization. And it also provided organizations with solutions within that. Now this data was used to develop various conference papers, which have been delivered overseas. It also helped us write international journal papers. The feedback from employees was equally as positive. They felt as though it was very therapeutic. It gave them a voice to air their concerns about current systems or current procedures. It also helped individuals appreciate their role in the department and how different departments are knitted together and the importance of food safety cultural compliance. And importantly, or equally importantly, it provides employees with a mechanism to develop recommendations, which are first identified individually and then discussed with co-workers, polished up and then presented to senior management. So there you have it, the evolution of the enlightened model. And if you would like any more information, please contact me on derek.watson at sunderland.ac.uk. Thank you for listening.